Hi guys, this is Michael from Opeth. I'm at Amoeba Records in Los Angeles, and this is what's in my bag. First record in the pile, Linda Perhax. This would be like a new album, I'm a Harmony. She put out a record called Parallelograms in 1970 on a label called Cap Records. It just disappeared, you know, so nobody knew about her. And I had a friend who's now passed called Michael Piper, and he reissued that record on CD mastered from a vinyl copy because he couldn't find her. And it said in the city, if anybody knows the whereabouts of Linda Parks, please contact me because we got royalties and stuff for her. And he finally found her. She was working as a dental hygienist here in LA. At that time, I was a big fan and we were coming over to play. So she came down to the show. She's a lovely hippie lady. She talked so quietly, I was like, what, what, what? And we even nicked some of her like music for like the intro. So she would hear her own music in a big PA, PA system and the rest was pretty brutal death metal. But she, uh, she loved it and we remained friends ever since. Every time I'm, I'm here in LA, I, you know, she usually comes to the shows. But like I said, this would be a, a new record. I don't know, I can't see any. Coltrane, uh, The Lost Album. Haven't heard it. Both me and my girlfriend are big fans. Yeah, I love like the Love Supreme, Ole, those records. But um, then he went, went spiritual and put out a couple of records like Om and uh, Ascension. Horrible, horrible. Dream Theater, they're friends of mine. Uh, this would be their first album. Uh, it's not my favorite, but I picked it up because it's kind of difficult to find these 90s pressing on vinyl. Alive, uh, it's a different singer than James Labrie. Mike Portnoy is still in the band here. They were really important for us, you know, to kind of find our, our own sound, I think. When this and the second album came out, we were still kind of a substandard death metal band. We were, we were pretty shit, to be honest and we didn't know where we were going. Uh, but I was kind of collecting, you know, picking up records uh, in the shops and secondhand vinyl for next to nothing. Came across bands like Yes and Van de Graaff Generator and uh, King Crimson and stuff like that. And along comes Dream Theater, uh, who did that kind of stuff now and with the metal thing. And I remember I got really interested in them because in the first video I saw, the singer had a Napalm Death t-shirt on. I was like, it's meant to be, because I love Napalm Death too. Um, but like I said, this is not my favorite of theirs, but I'm get, getting this one anyway. Speaking of Van de Graaff Generator, here we are. This uh, is uh, original pressing from the UK, 1970 or 69. Uh, the least we can do is wave to each other. <laughs> I love them. They're um, a prog institution to me. One of the early bands from the Brit prog scene. Very dark, uh, menacing and evil, twisted prog rock with cool riffs and saxophones. Great record, great record. Univers Zero from Belgium. I don't have this one, but I have a bunch of other records with them. It's, uh, yeah, I don't know how to describe this music. It's Insane. Highly skilled musicians. They have like classical instruments, but also rock, like a rock band with some classical uh, reeds, pretty much. Very obscure, apart from in Belgium, I guess. 
I picked up all my records in Belgium. It was like ABBA records in Sweden. Definitely worth listening if you're tired of the regular radio FM rock. Yeah, you're gonna die, pretty much. <laughs> priest, Judas Priest, uh, Sad Wings of Destiny. Never turn your back on the ripper. This is a reissue of sorts, but yeah, it's got the same tracks on there. I have, I don't know how many pressings of this one I have, but lots. One of my favorite records of all time. All of their records, I mean, they're still going, still great. But here they were a bit more progressive, which I like. Classic songs like Victim Changes, The Ripper, they still play those songs live. But uh, great ballad, Dream a Deceiver. There's a clip on YouTube, which is beautiful, great. And Rob Halford has got long hair. This is a hated record, but not by me. People hate on this album like it's a piece of shit, even the band themselves. But I think they're wrong. It sounds like a Broadway musical, which I think was their intention. I read some interviews with Paul Stanley saying that they wanted to be accepted by the serious music journalist, you know. So they did this album, and I remember when I was a kid and got this one, it's the early 80s, 81 or something. I thought it sucked. But then, when I got older, I put it on for some reason. And it has some rocking songs like The Oath and Under the Rose is a superb. It feels like I've been more inspired by this record than I'm willing to admit, actually. It's very theatrical. The zombies, I mean, they're much more famous here than they were in Sweden, I think. Time of the season is pretty much in every film. I loved the Beatles, but I wasn't too much into that scene. It was later on, maybe 2005, I got into the zombies. Got this one and was blown away. It changed me, this record. As I'm sure many people here would say the same. We play this record as a reference for a good Hammond sound when we're in the studio. Great uh, vocal harmonies and odd chord changes that he usually goes into like an unexpected major chord. I go like, nice. Stormwatch, Jethro. Steve Wilson played this record to me at his house. And I was like, I don't buy anything from Jethro Tull after 1975. He's like, wow, you're missing out. And uh, he played me this one, and this, it's got a song called Dun Ringel. Beautiful track. In the wee hours I need you And now by Dun Ringel I ripped them off a million times over the years. I emailed Ian Anderson once to try and get him to play flute on one of our records. He didn't reply. Fucker. <laughs> he's my idol. I think he's a genius and he's now kind of, he's still playing, but I think he's got like salmon farms. So he's rich, very rich. Miles and Porgy and Bess, my favorite record of his. The Buzzard Song. We were talking about covering the Buzzard Song with Opeth. I think it might be a good idea if we don't, to be honest. It's a Gershwin, you know, thing, and I don't know how many copies I have of this one. But this is original, and it wasn't that expensive, so I'd probably just add this one to the rest. And we're ending with the, the masterpiece of all masterpieces, Scott Walker's third record. It's called Scott Three. It's raining today. I got into him, his solo stuff, when I was working in a record shop in Stockholm called Mellotron. And the first song is called It's Raining Today. So when it was raining there, there was no customers, and we put this on. It has rain sounds all, all over, all, all through the, the song. And I was like, my God, that voice, that deep, soulful, beautiful voice. He's now passed, but I refuse to see that as, yeah, he, he's still alive. Wake up, Rosemary, and wipe your teary eyes. My favorite song on here is a song called Rosemary. 
but the whole album is it's a masterpiece. Very close to my heart because I was with my dad and his dad, my grandfather. He was dying, my grandfather, and we spent some time in a in his house, like a week before he died, everybody knew it's over, and he, we got to say goodbye and those kind of things, which, which was beautiful, and I'm ha happy I went. So it's just the three of us. And uh, one night I was trying to sleep because it was sad, of course, and I was playing this record in my headphones, and a door opened, and I saw my dad come up with his dad on his uh, show. He was carrying him. Not like, like he was carrying him to the bathroom, I guess. And I just watched them in silhouettes walk by, and it was magical as, as this album was playing. So it's, I get shivers talking about it. But so it's very important to me. But even if you don't have those moments, this is a record for, for life. It's life, this record. One of my favorite records of all time. Thank you That's so it. much. What was it like working at a record store? Loved it. Yeah? I had three goals when I was growing up. Uh, record shop, which I did. Guitar shop, did that too. And rock and roll superstar. Done. <laughs> on my way. <laughs> <laughs> I got that job. I, I was hanging out there all the time. Mm. Anyways, and one day the owner's like, can you watch for me while I go for lunch? And that's how I got the job, basically. <laughs> nice. And I never got paid. What? No, because I always took a record instead. <laughs> I never got home with money. How many copies of that do you think you have? Five or six? Yeah. Not that many. That's a lot, that's a lot of copies. Yeah. But in comparison to my uh, Beatles White Album Connector. How nothing. many copies of that do you have? Forty. Wow. But they're all numbered. So each copy is unique. What's the earliest number you have? Only 6,000. But that put me, put me back $500 or something. Wow. Amoeba!